I'm Rachel Shorak. So I've been in recovery for three years now. June 4th, 2019 is my uh, sober date. I have a daughter who I can now be a mother to, which I wasn't before I got clean. I've held a job for almost two years now, which I was not able to do before when I was using an, an active addiction. Okay. Um, and I am a productive member of society today. Well, thanks so much for coming out and joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, so can you start off by talking a bit about your childhood? I had a good childhood growing up. Um, I am the youngest. I have three older siblings, mm -hmm. um, two parents. You know, we all, we, we I had a good childhood. Um, no, no trauma or anything like that. Um, I, I was happy growing up. Everything was good. Lived the normal life. Did good in school, played sports, mm -hmm. all of that. Got good grades. So when did you first start experimenting with alcohol or drugs? Uh, my summer going into high school, so after eighth grade, um, mm -hmm. it was that summer, and I think it was more just you know partying, trying to fit in with the cool kids, um, with my older siblings, you know, just drinking beer or um, you know smoking weed mm -hmm. and thinking these were just fun party drugs to do you know everyone else though was um, just doing it on the weekends and I was the one that started to uh, sneak it you know on the weekdays by myself okay. um, but I didn't realize I had a problem mm -hmm. I was just doing it because I, I wanted to at that point um, but no consequences still I was still going to school mm -hmm. high school and I graduated okay yeah okay and after graduation what'd you do after graduation, after high school graduation, everything started to go downhill quickly. I don't know if it was l less structure, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I was like, okay, I need out of the house. So I enrolled in college and then I stopped going to class within the first semester, um, dropped out. Still never rose in like any trouble mm -hmm. um, legally. So, but my life was unmanageable. Like I said, I mean, I stopped going to class. Um, and I was miserable inside. So I, you know, tried to commit suicide twice, okay. um, unsuccessfully. Yeah, and I just didn't care about anyone except for myself. Um, I put myself, bef the drugs, before myself. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't care about myself either. I should say I cared about the drugs and that's it. Right. And I was always ashamed of that until, you know, I got in recovery and realized like that's a part of my story and I could help, you know, save other people's lives with that. My friends were only people that I used with. No one really cared about me because I didn't care about myself, so I didn't surround myself with the right people right. that cared about me. Right. Yeah, I, I used and abused everyone that, uh, that loved me. My mom would always try to you know, call me out and I would you know, deny, 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 I'm fine. Um, my dad started to call me out and I would, you know, I would, okay, I'll, I'll get help, but I wasn't ready yet. You know, so I would do these things. I would, I was uh, in a treatment center for less than 24 hours and I left AMA because I didn't, I wasn't ready. I didn't want it. I was just trying to people please everyone else. Other people in my family, you know, would come to me, hey, I heard you're on drugs, like you need to get help. And I'd be like, no, like it's not that bad, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. When really it, it was terrible. So how many attempts did you have of that, of partially trying to get people off your back, tr partially, you know, how many times did, would you say that happened? Well, they say more will be revealed. Um, I, I remember one time, because I don't remember a lot because I was just so high, mm -hmm. but I remember one time that me leaving AMA, that, that rehab, um, at, you know, less than 24 hours, and then I was on, I tried MAT programs uh, three different times. Mm -hmm. The first, I mean, they were all pretty much for some, you know, for other people. In active addiction, I felt completely hopeless. I thought my life was just always going to be that way. That's who I was. Mm -hmm. um, there was no chance for me, you know, to live a, a happy, free, normal life. Yeah, completely just miserable and broken, lonely, sad. So what happened in 2019? What, what, why are you here today? What was the change? I would say God. Okay. Nothing really happened, no, you know, I didn't get in trouble one last time or nothing really major happened. Um, I just, 
one day I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I reached out for help. I, I didn't know where to turn to though. Okay. I had, I, I reached out to my dad mm -hmm. and I was like, I want help. Um, and I Googled, I went to Google mm -hmm. and I found a detox center and I didn't know the difference even between detox and rehab. It's just not talked about that much. Right. I didn't know the difference. Um, I didn't know what I needed. So, but I mean, I had been using for over a decade. Mm -hmm. um, so I needed detox. I found one online. I went to Florida and I actually had left early AMA. Okay. And I flew back home, continued to use for another month. And then I was like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore again. Mm -hmm. And so I went back to the same detox and stayed and I took their recommendations and went to a 30, 60, 90 day rehab. Mm -hmm. um, the whole time there, I was like, I'm not staying more than 30. Mm -hmm. I ended up staying 60 and then the 60 came. I'm like, I don't want to stay 90. I stayed 90. Thank God. Mm -hmm. um, Cause you know, that whole time in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I don't want to be away from my daughter anymore. Realistically though, if I didn't save myself, I couldn't, I couldn't be a good mom to her. Right. Cause all I knew really for most of my life was drugs. Right. Um, and it's a small town. So that was scary to come home. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just, you know, leaned into people in recovery and, and did what I had to do, took all suggestions and completely surrendered. Very cool. Well, that's amazing. So um, could you talk about some of those specifics of those suggestions that maybe you weren't a super big fan of, but some of those and some that you that did make sense. But what suggestions did you take that really helped you in those early, you know, that that first six months, first year of sobriety? Especially when I first came home, uh, thir doing so when I first came home, I was told people, places and things. Mm -hmm. um, that was a big one for me. If I didn't change the people that I was surrounding myself with before I left, I would be using trucks again mm -hmm. um, and probably dead by now. You know, all of that is was important. And just to completely surrender, let go, trying, I had to stop trying to control everything mm -hmm. um, and just let it happen. And also another one, um, just to, things don't change overnight basically you know at first I was like okay this needs to change this needs to change um, everything's gonna get better in, in this snap of a finger but that's not you know reality mm -hmm. and still to this day three years later uh, life still happens you know life on life's terms mm -hmm. and bad things happen I have bad days um, but I don't have to pick up over that right. you know I, I can deal with it and lean into people that I'm close with in recovery and I can work through it without the drugs. Yeah. So could you maybe give an example of something that over the past few years that has happened and how you how you work through it? What you did? Nothing major has really happened in my life. Um, thank God. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't had to go through any terrible situations. It's really just, you know, relationships or bad days or things from the past popping up mm -hmm. um, and having to deal with those things and feeling emotions for once. I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> um, still don't always like that. But now I know how to, you know, deal with those emotions and feel them, mm -hmm. feel my feelings and that it's okay. And they too will pass. Right. And it always passes. Um, and then I come out and I'm like, wow, like I got through that, you know? Right. Right. So you've talked to, throughout about um, your daughter. So what did you, how did you become a mom that was sober and what, what did you do to, to be able to rebuild that relationship and to be able to be a mom again? So my daughter was young when I first, when I went to rehab. Mm -hmm. um, she was one and a half, I would say. Mm -hmm. So when I got home, she was turning two. Um, so she you know, kids don't have a concept of time. So that was good. I was fortunate enough to do it when she was still young. Mm -hmm. um, I missed her. She missed me. But it's like we never really, you know, missed a beat when I got home. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was able to be there for her from that day on when I got home mm -hmm. um, and just embrace it, you know, and just take it day by day, really. So you've talked about your parents and siblings. How did you rebuild the relationships with those folks? Um, really, I just have to work on myself. The more I work on myself, the easier and, and start to like myself and then love myself again, mm -hmm. 
the easier it is for my relationships with everyone else to 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 be where they're at to be healthy you know set those boundaries boundaries is important to me I had to set those with my family mm -hmm. um, you know and put my recovery first before any relationship in my life yep. um, and then that's yeah that's how I navigate those very cool so what dreams have come true for you and what hopes do you have for the future um, well all of my dreams I feel like have come true so far really when I first got uh, clean I didn't know what I was doing what my dreams were I would just wanted to not I just knew that I wanted to stop using drugs mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to do I didn't know what I wanted my life to look like and I still really don't um, I still take it day by day so really I can say that all my dreams have come true by not having to use that that's where it all starts for me yep um, by not having to pick up that heroin is a dream to me um, so I mentioned you know having a job like that's a dream to me and that's so simple to a lot of people that aren't in recovery but like that's amazing to me that I've held a job for almost two years now um, so that and being a mother you know I'm a single mother it's not always easy but I can be there for her today like that's that's amazing right. um, I recently went back to school I just finished so, Congratulations! Thank That's you. Fantastic. Yeah. Which, what did so, you go back to school for? Medical assisting. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So I didn't think, you know, I dropped out of college twice, mm -hmm. and here I am now, three years later, in recovery, and I'm able to, you know, finish my schooling mm -hmm. after being a two-time college dropout. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing what we can yeah. can do. <laughs> so can you describe a certain feeling that you've received through sobriety that was not there in, in active addiction? Serenity. Serenity is the main feeling that I feel today that I never felt um, and just happiness in general. I think I was so empty when I was in active addiction. Mm -hmm. I didn't really feel anything. Yeah. Like I was just so completely numb. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any happy feelings for so long. Yeah. Um, so I would say serenity, happiness, hope, all those things it's that's pretty fabulous all the good stuff <laughs>